Well, good morning, everybody, um, and welcome to the Smart Networker. Today is uh, what is today? Well, it's it's Thanksgiving in Canada. <laughs> That's what day it is. It's the the ninth of October, and um, fall is here for sure. We're experiencing here where I am, and uh, anyway. It's Monday morning. This is a Zoom call. And today we have a, a kind of we're taking a different approach. Um, I'm going to have a special guest speaker today, Elaine Connolly. And we're in the beta training that I'm doing on the Saturdays. We just finished a lesson a couple of weeks ago discussing the need to have information in a, a location for easy access. Um, now I came from the old school, so I had a three ring binder and in that three ring binder, I had, you know, articles and I had plans and I had strategies and I had statistics and I had all this information so that if I sat down with somebody, um, I was able to, you know, show them. So it was a show and tell. Now, for me, I learned this in the insurance industry. So this was a, one of those skills that I learned outside of doing network marketing and then applied it to network marketing to, to make it work. And uh, it, it was it helped me a lot because I didn't have to, you know, of course, we didn't have the computer and we didn't have smartphones. So I was the only source of information at that time. As we progressed in time, we've got, you know, the computer and now we have smartphones and the computer. Some of the computers in a smartphone are bigger than the first computers that came out. So you could do everything on your phone. And it seems that in today's world, people are responding to that. You go out to a restaurant, you do all you see is people on their phones. Uh, they don't talk anymore. They just, you know, they do widgets on their phones or send, you know, those signs and and stuff like that. Anyway, to make a long story short, so in talking with Elaine, Elaine and I worked together on a number of projects and uh, thought this would be a great topic because she's figured out how to put the data on her phone through the use of files. So um, she's going to tell us all about doing that. And um, I think I can learn, everybody else can learn and apply it to the concept of making sure you've got all the relevant ish information in, in sources that are easy to, to use and, you know, share with other people. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Elaine Connolly and welcome to the call, Elaine. All right. Thank you, Dave. Um, and if you would, um, I had sent you um, two documents to so you could display. And then uh, if you could copy it to the chat so the attendees could get a copy of that from there, too, that would be helpful. Oh, my um, God. You, you you're asking to, me to do technical stuff here. Do you know how to do um, that? I don't know. I might. I'll do the share first. Okay. And so it's on the screen. Can you see it? Yes, I can. Okay, good. So it's everybody, there. And then... Can everybody else see it too? Okay. So um, first off, I want to tell you that this is something that I tripped into for the reasons that Dave just said. Um, all these years, I've been working off of hard copy. I have a book for every one of the technologies. I still use it when I have clients and prospects one-on-one -on -one with myself. Uh, but again, everybody wants things immediately. They don't really want to go to an email to open a file. Um, and so it was a matter of figuring out how to interact with the prospects, you know, as easily as possible. So at the beginning of the document, you will see my experience. All right. And uh, whether you have an iPhone or an Android, it's going to take you in different directions. All right. Not only the type of phone, but the version or the model or how old your phone is. Um, is going to make a determination of what you need to do. Um, I can give you a general overview of what to take a look at. I can tell you right now that I'm working off of a, a Samsung Galaxy, Galaxy um, Android phone. Um, it's version 7, and they're all the way up to version 11. So there are some apps that I want to have on my phone that I cannot because 
there's not enough supportive data. So I have to get a new phone and I'm gonna do that within the next week. That being said, if you go into your settings menu on your phone, um, you will be able to select apps and you will be able to see what apps are on your phone that will help you with file manager management. Um, second bullet was that I disabled Bixby. Now, um, cross off the word disabled because what happened was uh, Bixby came out in 2017 uh, based on my research because I didn't know what it was. It's a virtual assistant, so it's artificial intelligence. And it's basically uh, was a pain in the butt for me. Um, and it, it tried to rewrite my text messages um, and just interfered with what I was attempting to do. Um, it's supposed to interact with your home um, icons, and then it's also supposed to interact with your voice and what you see. So the most that I could do with Bixby was do what they call four stop. Um, either you have an active app or you have, can disable it or the best you can do is four stop. Um, I was mentioning the day before we started this, um, this um, meeting that between yesterday and today, I checked my phone and I have three new apps on my phone that just have, have appeared without me going after them. All right, so basically it's taking up storage uh, and I'm gonna have to find out what they are and then uh, either disable them, if I can uninstall them um, or force stop them because they're gonna be using up my data and my storage time. Now I have Verizon, so I also have a um, app that says Verizon Cloud. And then I downloaded um, Samsung My Files because that's the kind of phone that I have. That's an app that's actually acting as my file manager. Um, I also um, downloaded Handcom Office Editor, all right, that helped me um, interact with not only Microsoft Word files, but also, and you have to understand my phone is older, um, but it also helped me uh, and when I downloaded another app, which was right on PDF. So the My Files Samsung was on my phone, but I couldn't do anything with it until I got the file manager. So when I open My Files, which is the Samsung version, I basically have six categories there. The first one is images. And what is under images, and I don't know how this happens. It's sort of like, how does a fax machine work? That still blows my mind. Um, but WhatsApp images, uh, because I have that actively and I'm a participant, um, any images that come in through any one of my WhatsApp accounts shows up underneath here. Uh, VZ Media is my uh, video library. Um, I also get images from Telegram uh, off my camera, any screenshots. Um, I also have separate software uh, app that I downloaded for quantum biofeedback, and I have pictures there of people's energy fields, their auras. Um, I don't interact on Facebook Messenger anymore, but it is possible there. And I'm not really sure what video captures are uh, because that I have no files in there whatsoever. Uh, the second category that I, I have underneath there is videos. And as you can see, uh, come, all these videos are coming from the different um, other operations that are on the phone, uh, the Telegram videos, uh, my video library, my camera, the WhatsApp. Um, then there's another one for the WhatsApp animated GIFs. I guess those are all of the uh, pictures and, and little com uh, comedy things. Uh, and then Telegram and WhatsApp. And then number three, audio is the visual voicemail. Um, I don't do a whole lot with that uh, because I didn't like what Bixby was doing. Um, so I really didn't activate that area on my phone. And then the fourth that I have in the uh, category under my files are my documents. And those are the ones that I use the most um, for
for download in the WhatsApp documents. Um, then there's downloads and those are all the files and it does give titles. So that um, number six is the APK installation files. Um, I'm not really sure what the APK stands for, but uh, these files allowed you to integrate with the cloud. Um, my quantum biofeedback is there. Uh, Proton Mail has an APK, WhatsApp has an APK, and Zoom has an APK. So it might be some type of management operations for those um, entities. Um, I can tell you that um, with all of this going on, uh, the one that I use the most, you know, are the downloads and the documents. Um, so with File Manager, I can go in when I'm talking to somebody on the phone and I can reference a document. Um, if someone wants to know um, what are the dimensions of, say, the Kinkle therm, therm, uh, the thermal belt, you know, for the back magnet, I can go into that file. All right, as long as I have it in my Word files, which I do, um, I can go into there and I can be reading the information, you know, to a client or a prospect. So any document that I have in there, I can find by name um, and then also be interacting real time with the individual as they're asking me questions. And it doesn't take that long uh, to find the files either. So the next section uh, tells you that the Android devices come with a built-in file manager that provides basic file management features. And again, it depends on what version phone you have, how old it is. Uh, the newer phones are gonna be more standalone where you do not have to download um, more apps to make it user-friendly. Uh, the default file manager allows you to browse and manage files and folders on your device's internal storage and SD card. Um, now, in on my phone, um, I'm using right now 32 of 64 gigabytes. And right now, if you go into settings, you can find um, the area that will tell you how much storage you're using. And um, if you click on it, it will also give you um, directions on how to eliminate files that have never been used or are just taking up space. Uh, so there is a way to clean up, you know, um, your storage area uh, to free up uh, more space, you know, to put more things in there. Um, also on my phone, I have something called OneDrive, uh, which I don't use. That just appeared. It's an app. Um, and because I, I don't know what it is yet and I don't know how to use it, you know, I, I really haven't explored that yet, but that's one of the ones that I'm going to have to. Now, using the Android's file manager, um, on the newer phones, um, on the Android devices, uh, what it had on the internet was that if you swipe up from the bottom on the newer Android phones, um, it's an icon with a square made of several small squares of dots. Uh, you'll usually find it at the bottom of the home screen. If you're using a Samsung Galaxy 8, swipe up from the bottom of the screen to open the app drawer. Now with an iPhone, uh, Apple has always been very discerning as to what outside agents can um, be put on the phone. And when the Android and iPhone came out, I had to go with an Android because I wanted to put my quantum biofeedback software on my phone and um, iPhone, Apple initially uh, did not recognize that software. So that's how I ended up way back when with an Android phone. So with an iPhone, um, there's changes in the upcoming operating system, iOS 11, which in addition to iCloud Drive, has a file manager app called Files. Uh, the files allow access to iCloud Cloud Drive, Dropbox, and also local, local storage. And what's interesting about this is I did not um, download Dropbox. It just appeared on my phone just by itself. Um, iOS 11 is expected early this fall, possibly as soon as Apple's new iPhone announcement on September 12th. Part of the reason is that iOS um, enforces sandboxing. Um, apps are only supposed to read and write files in their own sandbox. 
a file manager app would completely violate this paradigm. And this is what I, I was mentioning is that Apple wants to keep everything under the same umbrella under their control. That said, there is a manager for jailbroken j devices that works more or less like a file manager in Mac OS. Of course, that app is completely unsanctioned by Apple. So people that know how to get around the system, you know, have done so for their own myriad of reasons. Um, generally speaking, apps in iOS are responsible for managing their own files. So the Androids and the iPhones operate in totally different ways. Um, and everybody, not everybody, but a good number of people that I know tell me that I am limited in what I can do with my Android phone. Uh, but bottom line is it's working for me right now and there's really no reason you know, for me to change it. So what I did next was take a look at the file managers that you have as an option for Android. Uh, because with the iPhone, you're going to be limited to what Apple allows you to do um, because everything should be inherent and native to your uh, phone itself. So when your default file manager just won't do it, you can count on third parties to fill the gaps. Uh, when choosing the manager, it's important to consider your specific needs and requirements. Some offer advanced features such as built-in cleaning functions. Um, by that, I mean uh, that storage area, um, cleaning your files that are taking up space while others can connect to cloud storage services or computers via different uh, programs. It is also important to consider the ease of use and user interface of the file manager, as well as compatibility with your device. By choosing the most suitable one for your needs, you'll enjoy a more efficient and streamlined experience. So if you're looking for the best file manager to add to your collection, uh, best Android apps look no further. Um, the first one file is called Fire Manage Manager X Folder. Uh, this is a comprehensive file manager. Uh, you have to pay one time $3.99 to stop ads. Um, throughout this listing, you will see that a good number of these file managers do have ads, uh, but they can be handled. Uh, the next one is File Manager Plus. Um, this is free. You can also pay extra monthly, um, and it has a built-in audio video text editor. Uh, My File Manager is free, uh, is a clean user-friendly interface and this versatility. Explore File Manager has a dual pane out la uh, layout, which meaning side-to-side -side, uh, document display, um, which in some cases um, people want. Um, you have to pay to remove the ads, but you pay just one time. Uh, Solid Explorer is feature rich. Uh, you purchase more plugins from the Play Store. Um, you have to pay $5.99 to remove the ads, uh, but it does have 12 stock, stock connection options. Um, the next one is Files by Google. Um, it's free, easy to use. Um, and that's one of the ones that is on my phone. Total Commander has a unique interface and functionality. It has that dual pane. It's ad-free. It has a text editor, and it has stock plugins. Uh, CX File Explorer is a bright uh, graphical interface, user-friendly. You manage files on device or in the cloud. Uh, you manage other applications on Android devices, storage analysis, and you can clear your catch of temporary files. Um, on your PC or your computer, um, you have cookies, you know, on your phones, you have a catch of te temporary files uh, that need to be cleared because they're taken up space. Uh, Simple File Manager Pro, uh, you pay $1.19 for no ads. Um, it's easy to use, um, must open files with another supported app. Um, under material app files, rather, this one is free, it's ad free, and it's easy to use. Um, the X file manager, you manage all files on device or cloud, quick access, um, you have to pay to get rid of the ads. Under Astro, another management device, um, you handle the device and the cloud. Uh, it has a search tab function for advanced filtering and sorting and for file cleaning. 
Um, so what I found, you know, is go after the simplest thing that you understand. Um, and by learning about your phone and taking the time to basically go into and down drill into all of the possibilities of what your phone can do, you can figure out based on what you want to do with your phone, exactly what's going to work best for you. Um, so like I said, you know, in real time, um, I've lately been looking at my apps um, at least once a week. But like I said, between last night and today, there's three more that have appeared um, and how they migrate, migrate in, I'm sure it has to be uh, based on other apps, um, they tag along or by Samsung itself. Um, and a good number of the things that are on my phone, I can not disable. I basically have to force stop. Um, but there are still some wet at the very beginning that I was able to totally um, remove. So that's a general overview of what I found when I looked at the entire um, idea of file management. Um, and I'm not by any means an expert in it at all. Um, I got involved with this out of my own need uh, to have information at my fingertips while I was on the phone with someone. Um, and then also not having to always go back to my laptop um, to look at information or wait until I got home to find information for someone. Soup out and iPhone. And so I went on the app store and I found a number of programs for file management that I could download to my file. Um and now you I, have an i you have an iPhone? Yeah. All right, so you need to go in and you need to uh, go into your apps to begin with. Go into your settings and then go into apps first. Okay. And look and see what apps you have that could already be related to file management before oh. you go before you go after anything else. Okay, so I go into that and where do I look? Settings. Settings. And then you should, well, I, I don't have an iPhone, but... Uh, you should have something to get you into your apps. Let me look okay, up on so, my phone. Okay, so let's I just look searched. I in the search bar, I put apps. I have an iPhone too, and I have a list of things that came up. All right, so you have to look at the list of things that come up. Dave, did you follow Jeannie? Yeah, I'm. I'm looking right now. Um. Hmm. Okay, app downloads, app updates, automatic downloads. Okay. All right, I'll do, I won't waste time on this right now, but I got the general idea. So that's what I've got to do first. Yes, you got to look and see what apps you have that may be related on your iPhone to file management and explore those apps and see what how those apps, apps work. Um, YouTube has a lot of information you know, uh, but you have to be specific, put in your I, you know, in other words, iPhone, what your version is, I mean, what type of phone it is, uh, and then um, manage files or something to have something come up that's a pertinent that's going to tell you about your phone, and what its capabilities are. You so know, my question, my okay, so related to that, so Recently on WhatsApp, there was a file sent out about from Mike DiMuccio on the waterfall and the benefits and examples, and it was a really nice presentation. Right. So rather than leave it on WhatsApp, I could take that presentation and stick it into a file called waterfall. And then you don't I'm have talking... to if you, if you have your a file management system activated, it will automatically appear in your file manager. Oh, OK. OK, so that's what I meant when if you go back up under image on when I open my files, I have six categories. Yeah, All right. Yeah. In, in the file manager, it will talk about um, where those documents appear. So if you go back to my uh, page one of the handout. Under my documents, um, I've either downloaded them myself or they're what they are what app documents that appear in the file manager. 
Oh, okay. So all of this is like an automatic capture date. Oh, okay. All right. So, so I could be talking to somebody on the phone and then I could just click on my file manager and pick up that information and pop up on the screen and away we go. Exactly. So I would go into my file, my file manager. And then the next thing I would go into is my documents. And then I would pick up, you know, that file. Okay. And then once I open that file, I also had the ability to send that file to whoever I'm talking to. So initially to get this started, aside from that first instruction of going to your, with an iPhone, with the Android, the, uh, I will copy your email and uh, load it onto the, uh, uh, the text chat box so that people can get a copy of it. Uh, then it's just pretty much follow the instructions or Google search for instructions. Is that correct? Correct. But you have to be specific to the model and make of your phone. Got it. All right. Because the phones have changed from year to year on capabilities. And if you're not sure how to get into your phone um, and what to do with it, you know, go on to YouTube. Again, being very specific with the version um, of what your iPhone is or your Android is. All right. And you will see little clips and most of them are not very long. They're only about eight or nine minutes on how to file manage on that particular version of a phone. Got it. And so, like I said, I, I kind of did this in self-defense because I didn't want to be just running home all the time or not running home, but when getting home, waiting that um, amount of time to get back to people by going onto my computer because I was working with my three ring binders. I still do in person, but again, um, this was a way as I'm talking to somebody to be able to be sending them some documents. Got it. So I, I have the document opened on my page, the file management that you sent me. How do I put that on the um, chat? Angie, do you know how to do that? What's in your email? No, yeah, I, when, I, sent, I sent him the document. Yeah, it's a Word it? document. Uh, can you just right click and somehow copy and paste or something? So are, you on, are, you, what, are you on a Mac or are you on a um, PC? You're on a PC. So I'm right. going to select all and I'm going to copy and then I'm going to paste it into the chat. Let's see if that works. So let's go back up here. Let's go to chat and then to everyone. Paste. Your message is too long. Okay. So I just want the extension. So when I go to copy the extension from the email, it just goes to the file. It won't let me copy it. Well, I'm looking it up here. Okay. And that's so probably, this, this... Uh, you know, I think you might have, I think you might have to go into your Zoom settings, you know, in order to do that. But let me see what it says. Or for anybody that's on, if you want the copy of it, just send me an email and I'll send it back to you. That'll work real simple, Elaine. Okay. Yeah, there's there's not very many people, so there there we go. Um, yeah, all right. It does it does tell you how to do it? You know. Okay. Um, if you do a Google on you know sending uh, files via Zoom chat, it'll tell you. Okay. But I think you also have to go in and do something with your original settings. Okay. In order to make that happen. All right. Well, this is very system. enlightening. Uh, this is could be a huge addition to making it easier to have access to information. I know that I've gone through the old system. I'll, do you have anything on this? Can you send me an article? And it's like, you know, it's email, it's slow mail, whereas this is could be instantaneous. So this is great. Thank you very much. Yeah. And as long as you have it in your in your uh, systems, um, 
it will it will allow you to open it, you know, address it while you're talking to somebody and then also send the file to them. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. So we'll we'll check this out. And then um, if you have any further instructions, let me know and we'll post them somehow. OK. All right. That, that's it when, for now. Uh, yeah, actually, what I'll do. Something else. What I'll do is I'll post this on the smart networker and I will also post the word document uh, because we're going to do the video and then right below that I'll post the word document uh, from that so we're all good we're good to go. Okay. All right. All right. I'm going to stop the record and. Um... Yeah.